Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.5.6 and Razbam Sims AV8B Harrier Module. Welcome to tutorial 10, Nighttime Operations. Today we're going to show you how to make best use of the AV8B Harrier Night Attack during nighttime operations, which is what this particular version of the Harrier was designed for. Let's let that aircraft pass by first. <laughs> um, so yes, we're going to take you through all of the different systems and um, all the different ways in which you might need to adjust, uh, in particular, your lighting in the aircraft to make best use of it at night. Top tip number one is the flashlight, because of course when you start up your aircraft you've got no power, absolutely nothing is illuminated. In fact, without power the only things you can really see are your weather vane, which has a little bit of... Um, glow-in-the-dark paint on it, uh, and also your mechanical uh, stopwatch, uh, which I think has radium paint in it or something, I don't know. It glows in the dark, basically. Everything else in the cockpit is completely dark. So tip number one, use your flashlight. Uh, default binding for that is left, alt, and L to turn on the flashlight. I've actually got it on my HOTAS. Uh, and then you can use this for conducting your startup. And it just follows your mouse, uh, and it's it's pretty useful. Uh, in these nighttime situations. Uh, next thing to check before you continue is that you have your night vision goggles. Um, so if you don't have night vision goggles equipped, usually it's set up in the mission editor, you can go to your ground crew and you can say change helmet mounted device and you have the option for them to set up the visor or set up the NVGs. Um, you've then also got a, a binding um, right shift, right alt and number nine and that makes the little box appear or disappear. You want to make sure the box is there and it looks like this. It looks like it's unzipped because that means that they are out the box and on your head and that's where you need them to be. Okay, I'm going to go and start up the aircraft now and then we'll return once I have powered the aircraft and I'll show you the rest of the systems. Okay, and you rejoin us back in the cockpit after uh, completing startup. So I've uh, left the aircraft in a kind of normal daytime um, situation uh, with all of the lights on and all of the displays in daytime mode. And I've done this in order to demonstrate some of the issues that you're going to come across when operating at night. One of the major ones is going to be glare. Um, so you can see here, this is actually, these are just the standard daytime settings and you can see on my EHSD with the map turned on, I can't see anything. That is just an absolute light bulb right there in the cockpit and of course this becomes even worse once I turn on my night vision so watch this. This is the night vision at its standard setting and of course during daytime night vision is super useful uh, because with this I can now actually see I can actually see perfectly well outside the cockpit so I can look around and uh, yeah everything is very very visible whereas of course when I have it off can't see shit. <laughs> Turn it back on, that's great. But the problem is the moment I look down and into the cockpit, look at this. Especially this EHSD here with the map turned on. That is just bloom. Uh, and even the, the FLIR display that I've got on the right here is absolute bloom. I cannot read anything. Uh, the only thing I can read here is the HUD, because it's focused to infinity. Um, oops. Also note that uh, on the outside, I've got full brightness. I'll zoom out a little bit so it's not so loud. I've got full brightness on all my lights, and even to the naked eye, look how much bloom there is there. So, uh, what we're going to do is, first we'll take a little look at the external lights. So if we look round to the left here, we have the master mode switch for the external lights. External lights mode switch. Um, all the way to the back it's off, so it just turns off all the external lights. Uh, in the middle position it's in night vision compatible, and in full forward it turns them all on. So let's just pop it to night vision compatible and let's turn off our takeoff and landing lights. I'd only turned them on as a uh, demonstration. And let's jump to the outside view now. And there you go. So in that mode, I've actually still got the taxi light turned on as well, um, but in that mode you can see that all we have now are our beacons uh, and our formation lights. And that means that our wingmen, when they look at our aircraft, are not going to be blinded. I'll actually, for now, I'll turn off the taxi light as well and just show you what that looks like. So yeah, then we have the beacons and the formation lights only. And of course, if we're in a tactical switch situation, we'd almost certainly turn off the anti-collision as well, the beacon. And look at that. 
that's going to be much easier for somebody to, to look at with night vision goggles. And of course, we even have the opportunity, if we need to, to turn the intensity down on those uh, formation lights. Half, uh, half intensity is probably even better for nighttime operations. Great, so now let's focus on the internal lighting. Here I have all the internal lighting turned on. Of course, that's terrible for the night vision goggles. So let's actually set it up the way we probably would set it up for night vision operations. First thing is we would almost certainly turn the flood lighting off or we'd have it at a very low intensity. Um, so let's come back around to the front and see what the aircraft looks like now. Yeah, straight away you can see a big improvement there. Although when we turn on the night vision goggles, we're still getting blinded by that EHSD. So, next thing we're going to want to do is adjust the e, uh, the uh, MPCDs. Uh, they have this day-night rocker. You obviously want to put the rocker into nighttime mode as a starting point. Just like that. That makes all of the symbology much less intense. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to look down at the bottom of the UFC here and we see we've got a day-night switch here. This controls the HUD. So let's put... Oops. There we go. Let's put the HUD into nighttime mode uh, and that makes it slightly less intense as well. We then also have the option to adjust individual brightness levels for different displays. I'm just going to put these at the 3 o'clock position just now. That feels like a good position. Uh, and now if we turn on night vision goggles we'll see that the situation is much improved. However, there is still a lot of glare coming from that left MPCD. The right one is actually, well, of course it's not in focus, but it's almost readable. But that left MPCD is uh, no fun whatsoever. So let's jump down to this one now and we'll see what we can do with this. The reality is that during nighttime operations, you can't really use the map. It's just not gonna work for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to map mode and we're gonna select map and actually disengage the map entirely. And what we should then find is that becomes much more readable for us. Uh, well, not readable, but much more bearable for us when we're using night vision goggles. So, let's do that. And there we go. Straight away, you can see a big improvement there. I can actually pan my head left and I'm not getting blinded by that left, that left MPCD. So, that's much, much improved. Great. And this is probably pretty much the way that we would operate the aircraft with night vision goggles. We're not going to want to um, to actually have the map turned on uh, because it's just not usable for us. Great. Okay, um, the next thing to note is that uh, we can actually display the FLIR image. I've got the FLIR camera turned on on the right-hand side there. We can display that inside the HUD. So as long as the HUD is in nighttime mode, uh, all we have to do is press and hold sensor select switch down and you'll see that I have this very dim FLIR image being displayed inside the, the HUD there. So I'm just going to pan down a little bit here. Oops, let me see here. I can't quite get to the bottom of the, the uh, MPCD there for some reason. Let me see, what am I doing wrong? Yeah, most strange. I can go up, but I can't go down enough to see that. Because what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get... Oh, there we go, it just popped. Uh, I'm trying to get to the brightness and contrast settings here. And this will allow us to set the image in the HUD just the way we want it. So I'm going to turn, gonna turn the contrast down a little bit and have the brightness up a bit higher than the default, just like that. And then you'll see that we actually get quite a useful image here in the HUD. Uh, so let me see if I can reset my head position up a little bit again. There we go. Okay, and straight away you can see we have this image now displayed in the HUD. Now pressing and holding sensor select switch down long will make that disappear or reappear. And so what I tend to do is that while I'm flying, um, if I'm just navigating, I will often actually have my night vision off uh, and I'll simply uh, fly referencing uh, the FLIR image in the HUD. But then if I need to look around and acquire targets uh, and I'm not working in the cockpit so much, I pop on my night vision goggles and away we go. Also note that the night vision goggles have contrast adjustment as well. You need to map that uh, to something. Um, but uh, here you can see I'm turning my... Uh, I'm turning my gain down on my night vision goggles and that actually makes it easier to look inside the cockpit as well uh, and then I can turn that gain up 
and I can even I can adjust it all the way up to a point where it almost looks like daylight outside. Uh, but that uh, that may or may not be useful. It does mean that if you end up looking at a light source like the uh, the ramp lighting here, it's pretty blinding, and of course then your cockpit is kind of blinding. So in actual fact, what you will tend to do is actually turn it down a bit, and then you're going to get a much easier to deal with image. Okay, so here you join me in the air just after takeoff. Uh, I've enabled the forward-looking infrared in my HUD, giving me uh, a little bit of context about. Uh, you know, what's, uh, what's in front of me as I manoeuvre the aircraft. Uh, I'm going to get it up to altitude and stabilise it with the autopilot, and then I'll demonstrate um, the, uh, the nav flare mode that's built into the target pod as well. And we can also further tweak the displays to, to make sure that they're nice and visible. Uh, in these lighting conditions. You can see that uh, on this particular night it's absolutely pitch black, like there's really no visibility here at all. Okay, so I'm just going to level the aircraft out here, get it trimmed, and pop on the autopilot. There we go, that's the aircraft nice and stable. So yeah, of course I can pop on my, my night vision just now, and that would give me a bit more context. I'll turn off the uh, the flur in the HUD. And uh, I can now have a little bit of a look around, and I can see actually quite well what's going on around me. Something to note is that um, when you're flying in VR, which is what I normally do uh, when I'm not recording these videos, the, uh, the night vision goggles are full screen. So there's no ability to peek under them as I can here in 2D mode. Uh, and of course in the real world pilots would tend to operate pretty much like this. They would set the night vision goggles up fairly high uh, so that they then had the ability to look under them to see the cockpit. And they could simply look kind of over to, to see through the night vision goggles. Sadly in VR we don't have that, uh, that option. So let's pop the night vision off just now. And let's focus down on my right-hand MPCD here, where I've got set up uh, the targeting pod. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to press and hold the super wide field of view button, and then release, and that puts us into navigation mode. So this is an alternative to the, uh, the forward-looking infrared camera. It does exactly the same job, the only difference here is that we have a wider field of view and a higher resolution sensor. So if I pop off uh, my autopilot here, I'm going to maneuver with reference to this camera. And you can see that I still have horizon line, I still have a flight path marker, and I have uh, that W marker is basically the bore site, that's the nose of my aircraft. So I, I can actually maneuver and navigate the aircraft just using this display, and it does, does give me a nice high resolution and wide field of view uh, forwards. Um, now unfortunately this sensor is not able to be displayed in the HUD as the built-in FLIR is, but it can be left on one of the MPCDs as a nice little reference. Uh, I'm just going to get the aircraft back into, uh, back into level flight, uh, and I'm then going to have a little go at adjusting the, the brightness and gain on the display, because you'd probably want to adjust this to make it as um, easy to read as possible as you're flying. So I think I would probably want to boost the gain a little bit and probably boost the symbology too uh, so that I can actually see more easily what's going on. Okay, I've just done that so I've made some adjustments and now if I dive towards the ground you'll see, yep, it's now much easier to pick out the details on the ground there in that image. And there you go. That is how that operates. Let's uh, bring our view back out again. So, that concludes my quick look at the different uh, systems that you can use while flying the aircraft at night. Uh, I hope that that's been interesting enough for all of you and that that helps a little bit when you're doing your, your engagements at night. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. That's always a really, really big help. And I'll see you all next time.